firing last night in a DCU extravaganza. Kevin Smith and comic book legend Jeff Johns discussed what to expect from the DC universe. Although there were many things that caught fans' attention, it seems the brand new Suicide Squad trailer was the talk of the night. In the trailer set to the background of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, we get a better look at the tone, the team's dynamic, and a detailed look at the Joker in action. Christian, what do you think of the new Suicide Squad trailer? I loved this trailer. I loved it. It was, and I and I have said it when we did our uh, anticipated DC movie, comic book movies. I had this over Batman vs Superman, and I still put it there. I think that the tone is amazing. Everything that David Ayer kind of promised that he would bring, the it's chaotic. The whole film is chaotic. And I will tell you this: hold on to your balls. Um, Jai Ladies. Courtney is the best thing in this trailer. Oh my, Jai Courtney God. looks great in this trailer. It's like it's like a totally different actor. Mm -hmm. it, like he looks like he's having fun. He looks like he has personality. Now, the movie might be different, I don't know, but everything that I saw stood out for him and I couldn't believe it. And then you get the look of the Joker. Man, that laugh. That laugh. He nailed it already. Jared Leto is, is the type of actor that we know is going to bring it. Mm -hmm. And when you see what he has to, because Mark and I just did a trailer reaction video for this, for Suicide Squad, and we were talking about how he had to follow Heath Ledger. That is a tough thing to do. And so far, it looks like, you know, he's going to do it. Mark, what do you think? You know, you hit the nail on the head earlier, Christian, not after the hold your balls thing, but when you said personality, <laughs> because that is what I got from this trailer. And it's what I didn't necessarily get or want from the teaser that we saw at Comic-Con. That trailer was great. It had a gritty, darker tone. This one injected some fun into these guys that are totally not superheroes, but we might be pulling for by the end of the movie. And I think Margot Robbie's closing line said it all when I can't remember exactly what she said, but she's talking about how we're the bad guys. This is right. this is what we do. Seeing all these men mentally deranged individuals hang out together. It's like the cuckoo's nest has gone wild and is set free amongst the city. I love seeing Will Smith in this trailer. I love, you're right, your boy Jai Courtney I thought was great, Margot Robbie, and yes, yeah, seeing the Joker. I didn't think Heath Ledger won once watching it. I was just thinking this is a new version of the Joker. This is what I want to see. Best thing about this trailer, didn't give away anything. We got to see a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. Didn't give away any plot points other than what we already knew. I love when trailers do that. Yep. Yeah, I thought I think this is the good sequel to the very first Comic Con trailer. Once again, not telling too much about the plot, other than we know that the, a group of supervillains has been put together by the government to take on something nastier, and you know, and that their lives are disposable, and if they do this job, they'll get a, a new lease on life. I thought it was great, and I, I agree. Seeing the a little bit more of the humor, a little bit more of the the quirkiness and the weirdness that is going to be this film was exciting, and I, I definitely, I, I, I'm, I'm happy you said that about Jai Courtney, because I was going to come in and be like, <laughs> man, you know what? I was really impressed he with Jai great. Courtney. He great. I don't know how you could hold it on him, and I'm so, I was happy to hear you say that, because he was really good. Everything they showed is like, it's like if that's just the best of Jai Courtney and everything's downhill from there, it's still really good. I was sitting next to him when the, when he had already seen the trailer, but just watching Harloff's world crumble in upon it. No, right? it wasn't. It, no, because look, the, the thing is, like, your hatred must now go was, away. It's true. He turned yeah. me to the light side. Yeah. But what I'll tell you, though. Soak in the goodness. <laughs> no. Soak good. in the goodness. Why are you putting in a Christ. good performance, man? Be terrible. <laughs> um, but no, I actually, there's, there's two movies, like The Water Diviner, which was an all right movie. He's in it for like two seconds but he's good in it yeah. he's in he's in that movie with uh what was it unbroken uh -huh. with with mm -hmm. that angelina julie and he was good in that in it for two seconds it seems to be like when he's in these like supporting roles that it's that same thing that happened with sam worthington as where sam worthington when you watch him in movies like cake or when he was in everest he really shines mm -hmm. it's when you put him in the forefront and say that's your movie star that's your guy and die you know the last the die hard movie that he did and, and terminator with jai courtney mm -hmm. And maybe these are the roles he needs to do because when he didn't have, when he's not carrying on his back and he's part of a team, it looks like it's working. I don't blame him for Die Hard 5 at all. I blame the director. Speaking of directors, it seems like David Ayer has a clear lock on the exact tone he wanted to get yeah. from this trailer. Yeah. And so now August can't get here fast enough. It's like it's Batman v Superman's great. We're very excited about it. I can't wait to see the next movie. In the I, also, I also like seeing like all the different powers of the different supervillains because I, yeah. I was not 100% sure who Slipknot was. I know it's a band, but then <laughs> who's this dude with the weird skull face? Oh, he's got bizarre powers of flame and stuff. And it was cool to see that they're actually going to, they're not shying away from the insane, weird, supernatural flow of it. I felt the Joker uh, that Jared Leto's got is a really good amalgam of all the previous Jokers we've seen before with his take on it as well. Like, even that line, of like, wait till you see my toys, reminded me of right. the Jack Nicholson Batman, but with a little <laughs> bit more of a violent twist on it. 
I like the way he looks with all the tats and the weird, you know, fake teeth. I mean, he's creepy as hell, and that's how I want the Joker. So any new version of the Joker that we see, even after Jared, has got a now it's got this one to be. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And I think that what it does, and even listen to that special when you heard Kevin Smith and Jeff Johns talking about it, they clearly know that this movie comes out right after it's Batman v Superman, and it comes out in August. It has to further the DCU, yeah. and it's certainly going to do that. And it's going to and and. It's exciting to know that these characters that we see here, I don't assume anyone's going to die out of the main villains, maybe, who knows, but they it'd be interesting to see that these villains that we're actually going to be rooting for, even though right. they're, they're clearly bad guys, um, when they're going to be the standalone bad guys, maybe, you know, with Harley Quinn fighting with the Joker in the Batman standalone movie, right. it's pretty exciting now that we're going to have a, kind of an, an attraction to, to them. Killer Croc I, uh, eats people. That's all I know. Yeah. I'm in. I'm huh. just, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the humor. I do not want it twisting and turning into a, a Batman and Robin. Like with trailers, it's hard to sometimes tell what the tone of the film is because it's a lot of quick cuts and action and people jumping and punching and explosions. You're like, that looks awesome. And then there's one or two lines that kind of work in the trailer out of context right. then you're watching the film and some corny stuff starts happening you're like what is going on i don't I, i'm praying that that's not what happens with this film i don't want that to be this, the case so please don't let make that be real <laughs> i'd love to hear what you guys think about the suicide trailer make sure obviously for the live stream right now give your thoughts tell us exactly what you thought of the trailer and if you're watching this on a replay let us know exactly what you thought did you like it did you think it stinks Comment and tell us. All right, Ashley, what's next? All right, well, on top of the sexy Joker, also included in the DC special, the very first footage of the highly anticipated Wonder Woman standalone film. It was revealed that we will be getting an origin story of the iconic Amazon. Wonder Woman is directed by Patty Jenkins and stars Gal Gadot and Chris Pine and releases in 2017. Schnepp, what did you think of the first look at Wonder Woman? I thought it was fantastic. You know what? It's it's. It's everything I was hoping that they would do with Wonder Woman. And especially just these, like, I think it was like maybe eight or nine shots while Jeff Johns is talking about it with Kevin Smith. They're like, what did you do? And what's this? It's her origin story. And you just see these kind of, you know, her on horseback riding or her up in a tree somewhere, her like walking with a uh, uh, pine as, you know, it, I, I just thought the way that the, the shot looks beautiful and also a few scenes of her taken out, like I guess it's a bunch of Nazis. I don't know. Her fighting looked really cool. So those little moments makes me feel like, you know, when Batman v Superman comes out, we're going to see a Wonder Woman trailer attached to that for sure. And we'll get all these bits together into a, something that tells a little bit more of the story. But from just those little quick glimpses, it looks really fun. Yeah, I like the way it looks for sure. And I think that I like Patty Jenkins stamp on it already. Mm -hmm. But what I really took away from it is that this is DC's version of Captain America. Yeah. As where they're going back in time, doing the period piece, setting it up. Chris Pine seems to be, you know, like you were saying before, the, the Peggy Carter of yeah. it. And we're going to transition her from where she was into our world. And you saw that. You felt that that feel. I already know the tone of the movie. And I think Gal Gadot looks, we didn't really hear her say too much yet. Right. But as a badass and her fighting, I love the slow motion scenes. And I love the way they, des they described her. In that, again, comparing it to Captain America, to where he's the Boy Scout, she's the Girl Scout. She is. She's super kind. She, she, she wants to do right. But she'll kick your face in. And I think that that's exactly what she needs to be. This has been coming for a very long time to get this character. There's been so many struggles from Joss Whedon's version back in 2005, and it went through, and it's been going through the Warner Brothers system forever, and then now they got this DCU, it's a no-brainer. I really like, it's kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't look cheesy. Right. It looks like they're taking it serious, and they kind of need to for this, but I really dug it, Mark. Yeah, to quote the late, great Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter, gorgeous! Yeah. And I'm not just talking about Gal Gadot either. I thought this entire movie looked really beautiful the way it's shot. I do have a hesitation, I'm surprised you boys didn't bring up, is that the action scenes to me we saw like two of them it's mm -hmm. fine i get it i didn't like that we're slowing down and doing that resident evil matrix stuff every action scene i've seen so far i'd like to see her kick ass in real time for a majority of this movie so it makes me a little nervous that that's all they showed of her beating the crap out of people but look having said all that some people were a little concerned okay <clears throat> you hear chris pine is being cast in this movie and it's like oh no is all this other star power more experience going to overshadow actual wonder woman no this is Wonder Woman's movie, and you got that even from the 35 seconds or whatever amount of time we saw footage of Wonder Woman. She looks like she has a stamp on this character, mm -hmm. and I think that's why they didn't risk featuring her in Batman v Superman right. or not showing her in the trailers because, look, she's going to be a prominent part of that movie, and she's going to be everything in this new film coming out, and I think it makes sense. It's going to be a cool movie now. I'm excited. Yeah, everything about the Wonder Woman 
clips that we saw now makes me feel like Batman v Superman. Wonder Woman is the secret weapon. She's like the oh, you're going your walk away is like I can't wait to see the Wonder Woman movie. And yeah. God, I love that logo. I love yeah. that W. Somebody yeah. tweeted me yesterday because I I was like that's the best logo for an '80s rock band yeah. that they never took. Paul McCartney and Wings in the '70s. It was pretty close Very to the close. W. I love that, and I also what I liked again going back to what Jeff Johns was saying is that. You had, uh, you, we know enough about Superman's origin. We've done it a million times. You know, we know mm-hmm. Batman's origin. A lot of people don't know Wonder Woman's origin, especially right. not in film. Right. So the, I think that it's a given that you have to do this for the, again, referencing Captain America. So, Ashley, did you get a chance to see any of this last night? I did, and I'm kind of even shocked that, I mean, because I don't know as much as Wonder Woman as you guys know because I'm not familiar with the comic world but I'm so shocked as like we are remotely okay with this because I felt like your your guys' expectations were not you know you weren't going to be excited for the way that this was going to be turning out so I'm excited for this now and hearing you guys say that you're okay with the way this is turning out it's even making me more excited for it well, I think a lot of the trepidation when the r- original casting as you yeah. can go back and listen to Camp here rant about it <laughs> yeah. uh, Gal Gadot exactly. he was like she's a you, know, you yeah. know she's a model and this and that but it's like I've always been the said like look they cast her for a reason we might not know that she's right. a great actress but whatever she did in that ca- audition won yeah. them over and said she can be Wonder Woman not only in Batman v Superman but in her own standalone movie mm-hmm. so we're gonna I guess discover that I think they're holding the, her her voice back you see her talking in the you know talking about Wonder Woman that's her voice that's what she's right. gonna sound like but how does she project right. and how do how is she actually play Wonder Woman. I think they're going to save that for the trailer. You're going to hear her talk in the trailer. And she certainly looks like Wonder Woman, yeah. so it works. All right, Ashley, what's next? During the DC special, fans got a look at even more characters that will be joining the Justice League. Aquaman, Cyborg, Flash were all profiled, and it was also revealed that after much speculation, the Green Lantern will indeed be joining the party. Mark, what were your thoughts on the information we learned about these new heroes? Well, I've seen these tidbits. I love this, these little one-minute teases where you didn't even get to see the characters in their costumes. You just got to see the actors portraying the characters talking about mm-hmm. their comic book origins. You know who stole the show from me, though? was Cyborg. And I think I'd say that Cyborg is such a cool character. Ray Fisher seems like a great actor. He comes from a stage background, so he clearly is going to be able to have the chops to pull something like this off. And what's the guy? Victor Stone? Is yeah. the guy's name, and he was a football player. That's the best name for a football player I've ever heard. So turning <laughs> that guy into a cyborg makes total sense to me. Obviously, as soon as Momoa was cast as Aquaman, all the jokes that I saw that I right. made myself right. went out the window. And I'm like, if there's one dude that could legitimize playing Aquaman, it's going to be Jason Momoa. I wasn't aware. I don't know the lore of Aquaman that well, Schnepp. I apologize. I had no idea that his mommy was a god, the god Atlanta, goddess Atlantis, right? And his daddy was a lighthouse keeper? That must have been a crazy weekend in sandals. How does a guy who's a lighthouse keeper score with a goddess? She probably washed up on the shore and, you know, he saved her and Got you back said that that was the creepiest I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, she was gentle. She washed up on yeah. the shore. Yeah. Well, you take creepy or gentle. <laughs> yeah, you pick. I, I go gentle. There's some slapping, some jacking. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, yeah. that I think Cyborg. <laughs> I think Cyborg was the, was the steal for me yeah. because I didn't know enough about Cyborg, and I I remember when they announced, I was like, okay, we'll we'll see who he is. Mm-hmm. The, the look was all right. Then when they explain exactly who he is and why, and the, what they can do with him now with today's yeah. technology, I was saying that it's it's almost, he's like a he's kind of a version of Ultron in a way, and he, a good guy. Of yeah, Ultron, and yeah. and I think that, that to me. I really am excited to see what they do with this character, and I really love the Aquaman stuff. I, the second they announced Jason Momoa, I was on board mm-hmm. for that. Flash was the one thing. I'm still very excited to see Flash, and then you know, I was speaking to Dennis about it afterwards, and I think I was speaking to you as well. And I thought, and I just self admitting not a huge Flash comic book guy, but I thought that his origin story was actually what they explained, that it's everything basically from the TV show, but you're saying that it that's just from the TV show. It's a melding of all the different comic books, but it's directly it's directly from the TV show the way they explained it yesterday. Yeah. And it's basically, I think it makes sense because what they're doing, I like if I, if what it seems like what they're doing with the Flash television show it, and all the movies is they're making it so that we could have a crisis on Infinite Earths. We could have Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 3, Earth 4, all these different Earths. Batman v Superman and Wonder Woman, all the movie characters are all on some other earth you know and then all the tv characters are in a a different universe and the flash has the power and the ability because of his speed to to kind of dimensionally go and travel between these different 
universes. They're already establishing that with Flash going to Earth 2 in the TV series. We don't know what Earth the movies are from. And plus, who would ever call, like, if you were from Earth, you'd be like, obviously, we're Earth 1 and you're Earth 2. They're like, no, 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 you're Earth 2. Like, we, right. you know, that would be something like we don't know how many Earths there are, but I like that at least they're opening that idea with the Flash so that they make it so that you can have the TV show and the movie Flash different. I liked hearing that explanation, too, yeah. because it does legitimize him as a part of the Justice League. Like, I didn't know if the Flash was just like a really fast dude. And it's like, well, you know, Daryl Green's great, but is he going to help out superheroes? No, he can run so fast he can get to another dimension. That's yeah. pretty crazy. And your boy Kevin Smith made a great point last night talking about Cyborg, mm -hmm. how the upgrades to him can be so much more plausible now yeah. in this new society that we live in than when the character was originally conceptualized. But my takeaway from all three of these little featurettes was that it's characters trying to retain their humanity while still embrace their super powers, even with a guy like Aquaman, who is already half God. Well, I think that they also confirmed the time travel, that that's going to happen in the movies as well. You know, they're adding, that's what I liked what DC was talking about last night. They're going to have to add brand new things and stuff that we haven't seen in the Marvel mm -hmm. Cinematic Universe, and they have to do that with the characters that they've established really well in their comics. But the other thing, the, win the one that I went, whoa, finally! Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. We finally get confirmation that Green Lantern is coming back. Now, we don't know if it's going to be Jon Stewart. Um, we don't know yet, but they certainly said that he's coming back. I'm, I love that because they need to get past that last disaster. Sure. So now bringing him into it and the popularity of that character. Are you excited that he's coming back? Yeah, I really am excited. I mean, you know, those posters that came out, Unite the Seven, and then on this concert part, you only see six people. You're like, well, who's the seventh? Is it Martian Manhunter or is it going to be Green Lantern? It should be one of those two. And that they said, oh, you know, we're going to go through all these different worlds and we're going to travel to space. And they said Green Lantern Corps. So you're like, all right, well, the Green Lantern Corps, as we all hope, is going to be a Green Lantern Corps movie where it's like kind of like space cops and we'll be in outer space. It could be DC's Guardians of the Galaxy if they play it right. Um, having Green Lantern come in, I don't know if he'll come in at the end of the very first Justice League movie, but I, th I feel like. I don't know if they're going to introduce every single one of these members in the Batman v Superman movie. You know, it's called Dawn of Justice, but I think we'll see the Just League form by the end of the it film. It seems like he's going to be on another flight. Like, like, yeah. like he's on a later train yeah. getting yeah. the Justice I don't think League he's than be, everybody yeah, I don't else. think he'll be in Batman. They might Superman. tease him, like how they teased Wayne Enterprises yeah. in, in Man of Steel. Right. You might see some sort of tease, but sure. I don't even know how you tease that. Like, there's going to yeah. be enough in Batman v Superman just with those two dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.